So your firm specializes in ETFs. Perhaps you can explain what an ETF is for our viewers. What is an ETF? I, I could talk for a long time on this topic, but let's just break out the words quite simply. It's an exchange traded fund. So if you talk about what a fund is, a fund is a vehicle where people pull their money together. It can either be closed ended or open ended. So a closed ended fund would be something like maybe a hedge fund or a private equity fund where they raise capital, there's a fixed amount, and then they, particularly in the private, private space, they don't raise further capital through that vehicle. So people put money in, and then that investment vehicle does things. An open-ended vehicle is one where people can continuously contribute to that fund and the fund can grow. So if you start with 100 and then someone gives you another 10, you now have 110. And so it's open-ended. And funds come in different formats. They generally, uh, there are lots of jurisdictions around the world where you can have a fund. But essentially it's a pooled vehicle of people's money in a structure. So that's simply what a fund is. Now, the term exchange traded just means that that vehicle trades on an exchange. So a lot of funds in the world will be able to bought, be bought and sold through a subscription and redemption process and you'll have an NAV, a net asset value that's published daily or on a particular day and people would buy or sell units at that NAV. With an exchange traded fund, it has an, NAV, it has a, an underlying NAV but the, the fund is trading on an exchange like a share. So like any stock you would have heard of, you know, an Apple, a Google, an Amazon, a Nestle, a GlaxoSmithKline, a company's share, share trading on an exchange, the fund is trading on an exchange. So there are people bidding and offering th those units all the time. And that's essentially what an exchange traded fund is. But I, I explain that simplicity because what's happened in the world is people associate exchange traded funds exclusively with passive investing and indexing. And that is the bulk of the industry. But the industry is starting to change where there are now actually active strategies that are trading on exchange as a fund, as exchange traded fund, even though they're not tracking a broad index. But the bulk of the industry is actually what, what you call it, a tracker um, or a, pa a passive investing vehicle. And the reason it's passive is, or tracking is that if, for example, let's take the FTSE 100 in the UK, it's made up of 100 underlying companies and they, there would be an index that's provided by FTSE on those, those 100 companies and that index price would change depending on the underlying 100 companies and how their share price changes. A tracker or an index fund or an exchange traded fund would mimic and replicate those hundred shares and own them in the exact same weighting. And so essentially the, the world of passives is saying we're not going to try and be smart and pick 10 or 20 of those hundred companies, we're just going to own all hundred in a vehicle and that vehicle will trade on an exchange. And that's essentially what an exchange traded fund is. Now there are lots of nuances to this industry, there are tons of different exchange traded funds in the world. You get the advent of smart beta for example, so you get smart beta ETFs, smart beta exchange traded funds. And what these are doing is they're saying, we're still going to own the same 100 shares in the FTSE 100, but we're going to adjust our process in how we own those 100 shares to potentially use what's called a factor or, or add some a smart thinking behind it. And that smart thinking would be, for example, we want to overweight value stocks. So we're going to own more of stocks which have low PEs or low price to books and look cheap. And we're going to underweight those which look expensive and have high PEs or high price to books. And so the weighting changes, although it would still own the same 100 companies, you'd have more or less of the different, of the different stocks. Other factors are things like um, trend following or momentum factor. So you could, in the S&P 500 for example, there are 500 companies. A uh, momentum strategy might say, we're going to track the 500 companies, but we're going to own more of the companies which have recently done well, i.e. there's good momentum behind them. And we're going to own less of the companies that have done poorly, there's poor momentum behind them, and so they adjust the weightings. So that's a, an example of a, a trend that's happened in, in, the, in the passive world, or the ETF world, where you now get smart beta ETFs. You get other ones, for example, low volatility, etc. There are also niche ETFs, so you may or may not know, but today you even have a marijuana ETF, because marijuana has been deregulated around the world, and lots of stocks are listing, many of which are, in, are listing in Canada. And so someone thought, this is a great trend, let's try to own all the marijuana companies, and let's create an index for all the marijuana companies. And so that there's an index on the marijuana companies and there's an exchange traded fund which mimics the index and buys all those companies. And so you can buy the ETF and get exposure to the whole marijuana index, for example. Now that's not what we would do. We, we're not a firm that chases hot, sexy themes necessarily. We like to base our principles around value and, and I can elaborate on that. But the point being, there are lots of different types of ETFs. You also get sector ETFs, so you can have 
healthcare ETF, so European healthcare, US healthcare, you could have consumer staples, consumer discretionary, utilities, resources, etc. And so ETFs allow one to express a view in global capital markets in actually quite a finessed way. You don't necessarily just have to own the MSCI World or the FTSE World Tracker or own only the S&P 500 or the FTSE 100 or the Nikkei or the DAX or the CAC or the Stock 600. You can actually be quite nuanced in your thinking because this expansion of ETFs has allowed one to express quite particular views. And so, yeah, ETFs are a fantastic tool to build portfolios.